Hello and welcome to this Revision Monkey video on the required practicals that are going to be in Biology Paper 2 and this video is for AQA Combined Scientists and that's the Trilogy version so you do six exams at the end of the course all, which, all of which are one hour and 15 minutes long and this is for Foundation Tier for the 2022 exam. So for the 2022 exams, they've told you the required practicals to focus on. And actually for biology paper two, there is just one, which is organism distribution. So the rest of this video will be on that required practical. And also keep an eye out in the description because I'll put a link for the key content for biology paper two for 2022 exam. And I'll also put some questions for this required practical as well. Organism distribution required practical. There are two different ways that we are going to look at to sample organisms. The first one is random sampling and the second one is transex. So random sampling might be used to estimate a particular population size. So for example you might get a question a little bit like this that says describe a method to estimate the population size of daisies growing in a 200 metre by 100 meter school field. These numbers here will come up a little bit later on in our calculation. So we can't count every single daisy growing in the school field. It would just take too long. So we need to have a method of sampling that is completely random. And if they talk about why in the exam, it is to avoid bias. So as we said, we can't count the number of daisies in the whole 200 metre by 100 metre field. So instead, we measure out an area of the field using a tape measure. So here I've got a 5 metre by 5 metre area, for example. We then divide this grid up into squares using string and number those squares 1 to 100. So our grid might look something like this. Then the most important thing with random sampling is we use a grid called a quadrat. Now the one I'm going to use in this example is a 0.5 metre by 0.5 metre quadrat. In the exam it may well be a, a different size but that's absolutely fine. And we need to choose where to place our quadrat within this grid. So again it would take too long to do all 100 squares and count the number of daisies in each square. So what we use is a random number generator to select a square and you can get those on calculators or phones and it will pick a number at random for you. So we place a quadrat on that selected square and count the number of daisies present and then we repeat the steps for perhaps nine more random squares. So we might do ten in total. So let's say our random number generator picked us out the number nine. What we do is we take our quadrat and we place that on square 9 and we count the number of daisies present. We would then repeat that for another square. For example, if our random number generator there picked up us up 47, we'd place our quadrat on 47, count the number of daisies present. And again, for example, 72, again counting the number of daisies present. Now we'd repeat that for around 10 squares. So we've got different quadrats here and we've counted the number of daisies present in the squares. And we're going to then calculate a mean number of daisies per quadrat. And because we're going to use this number again in a minute in a calculation, I'm just going to leave it as a decimal rather than rounding it as I would do normally with a mean. So we've got a mean number of daisies per quadrat and now we need to use this to estimate the number of daisies in the whole school field. So we need to know our area of our quadrat. So we do 0.5 times 0.5 and that's 0.25 metres squared. We need to know the area of the school field. So from, given in the question it was 200 metres by 100 metres. So 20,000 metres squared. The next thing that you need to work out is the number of quadrats that would fit in the field. So we've got the area of our field divided by the area of one quad quadrat and that gives us 80,000 quadrats. So if 80,000 quadrats fitted in our field and the number of daisies in each quadrat was 0.8 as an average, 
then the estimated number of daisies in the whole field would be our number per quadrat multiplied by the number of quadrats that would fit in the field. So 0 0.8 times by 80,000 would give us a total estimate of 64,000 daisies. A couple of key points then. Increasing the number of squares sampled will increase the reliability of the population size estimate. They may use the word reliability or they may use the word accuracy, but the more quadrats that you put down on that field, the more reliable your estimate is going to be. Now, for some organisms, calculating percentage cover might be more appropriate than counting the number of organisms. For example, you may well have seen um, something like lichen growing on trees or walls. If you wanted to sample lichen, you might use a really small quadrat, so just perhaps a 10 by 10 centimetre grid. In the previous example with daisies, we would look at one random square which we'd selected by our random number generator, and we calculate the number of organisms inside. However, with lichen, we can't do this because you can't see individual organisms. So instead you might need to count the number of squares covered by the lichen. Now all of the whole squares you can just count up like so and then we will look at any partial squares that we've got like perhaps this one and this one where they could fit together roughly to make a complete square. And we will continue to do this estimating the total number of squares that are covered by the lichen. So when we've got this, we use the equation the number of squares covered divided by the total number of squares times 100 and this will give us our percentage cover. So if I've estimated that 30 squares in total are covered by the lichen, there are 100 squares on the grid, so 30 divided by 100 times 100 will give us an answer of 30% coverage. Another way we could sample the distribution of organisms is using a transect. So for this we might be asked questions such as how does light intensity affect organism distribution? Or how does the distribution of organisms change as you get further from the shore? So let's take this example in terms of seeing how light intensity affects organism distribution. So under the tree the organisms will be subject to more shade than further away from the tree. So we can sample the organisms at regular intervals and see how the light intensity affects their distribution. So what we do is we'd lay a transect line, this could be a tape measure or some string, along the ground starting at the base of the tree. We would place a quadrat at the zero meters mark and count the number of organisms, so for example daisies or it could be something else that you're looking at present in the quadrat. We would use a light meter to take a recording of the light intensity and record this in a table. We then repeat steps two and three at regular intervals along the transect line, for example every two meters. So we place our quadrat and our light meter here, 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 each time counting the number of organisms for example daisies or whatever we were looking at and calculating the light intensity. Now I want you to imagine that we are sampling in a woodland and along the transect away from the tree there's lots of long plants and long grasses. Now in this case we simply can't place a quadrat on top of the long grass okay? because the grass is just far too long. So you might see an exam them talking about counting the plants that are just touching the transect line. So if you've used string and pulled that along the long grasses, you might be simply counting the different species that are touching the transect line. Another thing to look out for, don't be put off if they talk about wanting to measure something vertically. So for example, they could look at how height affects leaf size or how height affects lichen coverage. In this case, Think about doing the practical in exactly the same way. So you may use a, school, a very small quadrat and measure percentage cover of something as you go up. Or you might simply, if you're measuring leaf size for example, see any leaves that were touching 
the line and measure their size as you go up and see how that changes as you go up the transect. So don't be put off if they're talking about one vertically going up a tree or up a wall or something like that. It's exactly the same process as the horizontal transect that we looked at before.